Hi, I'm Blair, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about all the books I managed to find in a charity shop that were an absolute steal. So I only spent probably about, I think it was about 18 quid altogether, and I got 11 books. So charity shops, if you're not from the UK, are like thrift shops in America, but way smaller, way less stock, and uh, it goes to a good cause. Um, so I always love to get books there, because why not? I love buying books in charity shops because you can save so much money and in this economy <laughs> who can buy new books all the time not me not me yeah let's just round it up and say that I spent like 18 quid I'll start God, this video feels like a bit of a mess already and I've barely begun so I managed to get 11. I think I've said that so many times now, but my original plan was to spend 10 pounds, like see how many books I could get for 10 pounds. But then like I saw some books and you know, just, I was like, let's just make it like 20. <laughs> and you know, whatever, they're second hand. So the first ones I've got, um, which I've never heard of before, this young adult series and it is the I think it's called Annals of the Shore it's Ursula Le Guin and gifts voices and powers it's young adult fantasy um, I'm not a huge fan excuse you Kayo excuse my dog not now after a distraction from my two dogs. So yeah, gifts, voices, powers. I think that's the order it goes in. Young adult fantasy. I've heard good things about this author. And when I saw the full set there, I was like, why not? I'll give it a go. And I tend to prefer children's and young adult fantasy um, for the nostalgia of it. I feel like I just really enjoyed fantasy more when I was younger. I still like it now. Um, but it's not like my go-to and I'm definitely one of those people that will probably always pick sci-fi over fantasy I'm in my cyberpunk era um, So these three books all follow three different main characters from book to book, but I think characters intertwine um, I don't know much about it, so I can't tell you much about it because what am I not gonna do? My research! It is what it is. I'll let you know though. <laughs> the next ones I was so excited to find and I'm gonna make a video with these. Um, I've been trying to find the SF Masterworks. Like I would love to have a whole like shelf of these. And I saw three in the same charity shop. So I'm, I think that the same like person, <laughs> I glitch all the time. <sighs> Had to edit myself out because I am embarrassing sometimes. So, got three SF masterworks. I got Hellstrom's Hive by Frank Herbert, Cities in Flight by James Blish. Ooh, Blish, that's quite nice to say, isn't it? And Nonstop by Brian Aldis. I'll give you a little bit from the back of all of these. And this one's got a note inside. I love finding little notes in um, books. This one says, For my darling, happy birthday, love, Danny. Kiss, kiss, kiss. And it's 2022 and they've already fucked up this book a bit. Like, <laughs> you've had it like a year. Treat your books with some respect. Um, anyway, let me get to it. Let me read the back. <clears throat> Have a sip of my tea first. <sighs> I had to put my dog in another room. He it's he just loves to be chit-chatting at the window. Loves to... So, 
he's out the room. Also, my cup today. Confused cat. Woof. No, moo. <laughs> Confused Blair. Um, I don't know if you've, oh, you've, I'm speaking to the literal void almost. But if you know Plumbella from YouTube, <laughs> she does Sims content and her dad made this, designed this mug and I love it. Okay, let me read you these blurbs. Hellstrom's Hive by Frank Herbert. America is a police state and it is about to be threatened by the most hellish enemy in the world. Insects. When the agency discovered that Dr. Hellstrom's Project 40 was a cover for a secret laboratory, a special team of agents was immediately dispatched to discover its true purpose. What they found was a nightmare more horrific and hideous than even their paranoid government minds could devise. Sounds pretty good, huh? I thought so. So I'm looking forward to that one. I'm going to do a video of just reading SF Masterworks books for like a week. And the blurb for Brian Aldiss's non-stop. Curiosity was discouraged in the Green Tribe. Its members lived out their lives in cramped quarters, hacking away at the encroaching ponics. As to where they were, that was forgotten. Roy complained, decides to find out. With the renegade priest Marappa, he moves into unmapped territory, where they make a series of discoveries that turns their universe upside down. This one sounds less intriguing to me, but we'll see how it goes. This doesn't even feel like it's been properly broken into. You know, it's stiff. And the last FS Masterworks that I picked up, I think this is like a few books in one. If I'm correct. Well, we'll see. <laughs> James Blish's Masterwork, originally published in four volumes. All I needed to do was read the first line. <laughs> Explores a future built on two crucial discoveries, anti-gravity devices, spin disease, which allow whole cities to be lifted from Earth to become giant spaceships, and longevity drugs, which enable their inhabitants to live for thousands of years. As Earth stagnates, one by one, the cities depart to the stars, leading to the establishment of a unique galactic empire now this is a beast. This is a beast for me, anyway, personally. I don't tend to read like huge books like this, but it sounds really good. So I'm looking forward to it. What great charity shop finds, right? Yeah. Now this one is, I was really excited to find this. So when I was a child, a series of unfortunate events was my jam. Like, I was a child of trauma. So when I was reading this, I was like, <laughs> it's pretty relatable, yeah. My life too is a series of unfortunate events. So I, I was really excited to find the first one in a charity shop because I've been wanting to read like these again for ages. But I forgot how like, because it's children's obviously, but I forgot how easy of a read this would be to me now. I forgot how. I guess I just didn't think, because when I was younger, oh God, this is such a long way to go around this. When I was younger, this seemed like quite a book to read at the age I read it. I can't remember what age I was, I was really young. Um, but now looking at it, I'm like, I could sit down with a cup of tea and finish this quite happily, which is definitely what I'm gonna do. But I think I'm gonna buddy read it with my friend Jess from our book club. Our book club. <laughs> she's the founder, I was just the first member. <laughs> um, but she's also up for reading it, so I'm gonna wait and read it with her because that's, it's more fun, isn't it? Another great find. I'm just gonna keep saying it. Find, find, find. You get a book, you get a book, you get a book. That's what charity shop book shopping is. Next one. Now this. So, I don't know if you've watched my previous videos or anything like that. The Power of the Dog by Don Winslow. Wait, I have it. 
The Power of the Dog by Don Winslow was my absolute favourite read of last year. I know, it looks like a, a dad book, right? It's a masterpiece. It, it was my top read because it's the one that stuck with me the, the most. And the one that I kept going back, like going back to in my mind and thinking about the characters. It was just so complex. Oh, it was lovely. Well, not lovely. It's not a lovely story, but really enjoyable. I love anything related to like drug cartels, gangs. So that was right up my street. And then in the charity shop, I found The Cartel by Don Winslow which is also very highly rated. Again, similar sort of premise. Um, drug, you know, drug cartel. I believe it's following the same guy. Um, because it's all semi-based on reality, I think. But don't quote me on that. What am I not gonna do? My research. But I'm really excited for this. I'm really excited for this. I'm saving it for the summer because that's when I read The Power of the Dog. And... Oh, that's gonna be good. Next one. I'm busting through these. Busting through them. Ugh. This next one I mentioned in my video yesterday. Um, I picked up the next in the Thursday Murder Club series. Um, the Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman. Really excited to find this. Um, and I think I paid like a quid for it. It's just so good. Like, we're in a money crisis here in the UK and I think the whole world is. So when I find things like this, it just makes me so happy because I was really wanting to read it, but I was keeping an eye out for it in charity shops. Um, I'll read you a bit of the back of this one, um, but again, I think most people know about these now. They're so popular, multi-million copy bestsellers, according to the top. Um, Elizabeth has received a letter from an old colleague, a man with whom she has a long history. He is being hunted and he needs her help. His story involves stolen diamonds, a violent mobster and a very big mistake. That was just a snippet. I'm being mysterious. Um, really excited to read this. I'm gonna breeze through that because I did with the Thursday Murder Club. Okay, we're moving on to the last one now. Um, this one came out in 2022, I believe. And it's Idol by Louise O'Neill. I haven't heard any reviews on this. I haven't heard anyone else's thoughts. Um, I just remember the premise sounds really good. It's about an influencer, I believe, who's doing really well in their career. And then they decide to write a, a blog post or something, you know, along those lines about um, a sexual awakening she had with her girl best friend when she was younger. But then she hasn't spoke to this girl for ages and then I think it will come back and... But then years since they last spoke, Lisa gets in touch to say that she doesn't remember it that way at all. Her memory of that night is far darker. It's Sam's word against Lisa's, so who gets to tell the story whose truth is really a lie? So, mystery. But I like the idea of, like, influencer. Like, an influencer, um main character I think that's quite cool if it's done like well but I haven't heard anything about it so if you've heard anything about this book let me know some engagement would be great because at the moment I'm just speaking into the void almost almost um, so they were all my books that I'm really like happy that I got um, I really do want to make a video uh, reading SF Masterworks for a whole week. Um, on this sort of like yellow vibe, actually, uh, my best friend Aiden got me this for my birthday. 
It's a Johnny Silverhand from Cyberpunk 2077 and I love it. Johnny Silverhand is one of my favourite characters ever. I love morally grey people and he's just a fucking vibe. Um, so that was a really cool birthday present. I know it's not a book, but whatever. Uh, so thank you for watching. I forgot to say that in my last video. If you did watch, I mean, who knows? Um, and if you got this far, amazing, you've got through my rambling. Um, if you did enjoy the video, you know, consider subscribing. I've got very few subscribers at the, subscribers at the moment. <laughs> but I'm going to keep it going. I've got a good good system going on in my life with the making the content and editing it. And I, every video I do, the editing gets better. But I still do make little silly mistakes. And then I post it and I'm like, oh, I'm not going back and changing it now. So hopefully this one will be the one without mistakes. What do you reckon? So yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully see you in the next one. Bye!